Hello friends! People usually settle in areas that somewhat resemble honeycombs, where everything is divided into compartments for the convenience of performing ordinary human functions, such as sleeping, eating, and occasional social events. But if you travel the world, you can discover several incredible places where life is uncomfortable and difficult, yet people still inhabit them. In today's video, I will tell you about the strangest places around the world where people live. The abundance of plastic waste in bodies of water is one of humanity's environmental problems. An interesting solution was proposed by Reichhardt Soa, who built a small island on plastic bottles. To implement his idea, he needed about 200,000 to 250,000 plastic bottles and a large amount of plywood, which helped keep the island afloat. The island's core is made of entirely plastic, which is held together with sturdy nets. To prevent the construction from falling apart, he added soil to it and planted trees, which eventually took root, holding the bottles together even better. Currently, this man-made island is located near Isla Mujeres in the Caribbean Sea. After creating the island and building a home on it, Rijkaard moved there with his wife and children, and they live on it to this day, growing trees and various crops. In the second half of the 1930s, Italian engineer and designer Angelo Invernizzi decided to build an unusual country house for his family in the suburbs of Verona. It was a rotating house. Initially, the house was supposed to rotate only 180 degrees, but during the design process, the angle was increased to a full 360 degrees, implementing the principle of a sunflower that follows the sun. Construction took place from 1929 to 1935. The engineer designed it to rotate at a speed of 4 millimeters per second, allowing the building to complete a full turn in 9 hours and 20 minutes. Moreover, it could rotate both clockwise and counterclockwise. The house was powered by two 3-horsepower engines. Unfortunately, after the engineer's death, the building stopped rotating due to problems with its maintenance. Currently, the villa is immobile and fixed in its most appealing position, looking symmetrical from the main entrance. There is an unusual town called Centenil de las Bodegas, located in Andalusia, southern Spain. It can be truly frightening for those who visit it for the first time. This town is nestled in the cliffs, which literally form the sky on some streets. It seems like they could fall apart at any moment. However, they have remained in place for eight centuries. All the buildings there are painted white, and it seems as if some architect created this ensemble in a single moment. As you've probably figured out, the town isn't only famous for its color. Many houses are literally built into the cliff slopes, where they find shelter from extreme heat under the natural overhanging rocks. The cliffs serve as both roofs and shelters from rain, which can be rather heavy, although infrequent. They also provide shade and coolness inside the houses. Even some parts of the streets are covered with roofs of rock, like galleries. It's an unusual use of the landscape, but undoubtedly clever and wise. Hangshan Hanging Temple This is one of China's most popular attractions. It is located near Datong in Shangzi province. This man-made structure is nearly 1,500 years old and stands 75 meters above the ground, about the height of a high-rise building. It's a place of pilgrimage where many visitors gather daily, and it's no wonder, as this is truly a unique spot in China. The temple is constructed on the side of a cliff and incorporates three religious concepts, Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. Even though the structures appear to be suspended in mid-air, it's firmly attached to the cliff by large oak beams drilled into the rock. To date, there have been no complaints of creaking or instability in the galleries. Sanctuary of Madonna della Corona This is a unique shrine built in Italy at an altitude of more than 600 meters above sea level, right on a vertical cliff. The sanctuary is located almost at the very top of the cliff and is well protected on one side. However, it is unclear how they managed to build it on such a narrow rocky ledge of Mount Baldo in the Italian Alps. This extraordinary place was initially supposed to be a retreat for holy people who wanted to get away from the world to pray in silence. 
The church was built in 1530. With time, the number of people who sought refuge there, looking to stay silent even if for a couple of minutes, increased greatly. Nowadays, anyone can make a pilgrimage to this place and contemplate the divine beauty and the unity with the mountain landscape. One only needs to climb the narrow staircase to the unique square where the complex is located, having somehow managed to survive the turmoil of the 20th century. The world's largest Buddhist academy, Larungar, is located in the Chinese county of Sirtar in Tibet. It is situated at an altitude of 4,000 meters and currently houses over 40,000 monks, nuns, and their students. The academy was founded in 1980 in a completely uninhabited valley, and today, it stands as one of the most important Buddhist centers in the world. Within the Institute's grounds, there are thousands of monastic residences built on the slopes, with buildings hanging above one another. Interestingly, they have electricity there, but no sewage system, so water has to be carried in buckets. Chong Knias Floating Village This unusual settlement is located in Cambodia, on the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia. Lake Ton Le Sap serves as a floating home not only for a vast amount of fish, but also for a population of around one million people. They live in houseboats on the water surface. The reason they chose this place to live is the lake itself. It is one of the most fish-abundant places on Earth, hosting up to 200 different species. It's a freshwater lake, so there are no sharks or crocodiles in it. This extensive area can be roughly divided into several inhabited areas, one of them is the village of Chong Knias, which is home to around 1,000 families. These people live and work on the lake, and their way of life is exploited by the tourism industry to some extent. It's not entirely ethical when random people on brightly colored boats regularly intrude into their daily lives just to see how they live, and it doesn't make the locals any better off. However, what's interesting here is how they managed to establish a sewage system and have access to drinking water, even though the lake serves as a single reservoir. But since they have been living there for so many years and don't seem eager to move away, they must have certainly found a way to solve this dilemma. Chinese Hallstatt A village named Hallstatt, which is an exact copy of the Austrian one, has recently appeared in the southern Chinese province of Guangdong. The village was built with the support of a metallurgical company that invested around $1 billion in the project. The construction of the Chinese Hallstatt began with the erection of an exact replica of a famous church tower, which is the landmark of the Austrian village of the same name. Afterwards, entire streets were built, identical to the original. Of course, Europeans initially expressed dissatisfaction with China's plagiarism. However, over time, it was decided that the newly constructed Hallstatt could serve as a good advertisement and attract Chinese tourists to Austria. The Austrian Hallstatt is a favorite destination for tourists, where they can not only enjoy the beauty of the Alpine mountains, but also see many interesting landmarks. In addition to the church, the village is famous for its ossuary with painted skulls and salt mines. The Lonely Drina River House Located in the middle of the Drina River in Serbia, this solitary house sits atop a rocky outcrop surrounded by water. This attraction is located near the town of Bajina Bashta, in the midst of the beautiful natural landscape of the Tara National Park. The Drina River House was built in 1968 by a group of young friends looking for a quiet and secluded place to sunbathe after a good swim. The young people started transporting wood from an old abandoned warehouse, using homemade boats and canoes to travel across the river. They also used the force of the current to transport some of the larger pieces of wood. Thus, one of the most iconic wooden houses in the country was created. The house was flooded several times and was then rebuilt practically from scratch. The house survives thanks to the determination and persistence of the residents of Baina Bashta, who have always been determined to protect and maintain it. Today, this small oasis is a popular spot among tourists who are intrigued by the unique story of this charming and resilient little house, which remains unfazed by the weather and the force of one of Europe's most turbulent rivers. Eliuei Island This is the third largest island in the Icelandic archipelago, and it looks like an iron standing alone in the ocean, completely uninhabited and covered in greenery. Who would think to build a house there? This is perhaps the most remote house on our list. It sounds like a plot from a detective novel, doesn't it? 
It's no wonder that this place is shrouded in rumors and stories. In reality, however, it's much more prosaic. The island was once considered an excellent location for people who were obsessed with bird hunting. It's home to an abundance of puffins, which attract people who enjoy shooting them. It might sound terrible, but the mystery of the house's existence is rather bland. It's not a secret residence of some millionaire or a hermit's hideaway. It's simply a hunting lodge built in 1953 for anyone who wanted to spend time in nature without having to deal with other people. Today, only members of the official hunting society are allowed to use this house instead of just anyone off the street who fancies shooting at these birds. Imam's Palace, or Stone House. It is one of the most recognizable pre-war buildings in Yemen. The palace was built in 1930 as a summer residence for the ruler of the Kingdom of Yemen. The architecture of the palace closely resembles the gingerbread houses of the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, with multi-storied structures made of fired clay bricks adorned with white gypsum ornaments around the windows. Before the construction of the Imam's summer residence, another palace existed on the site, but it was destroyed by the Turks. The lower rooms of the palace were carved into the rock, and ancient burials were said to have been discovered there. There is no information as to what existed at this location before the old palace. The building has seven floors and 35 rooms. Steep steps make climbing to the top rather challenging, while the high altitude above sea level only adds to the challenge. The palace contains very few exhibits, but the view from the top is breathtaking. Ponte Vecchio in Florence can be considered one of the main attractions of the Tuscan capital. Its uniqueness lies in the fact that it has never changed its appearance since its construction in 1345. The total length of the bridge is 95 meters and its width is 32 meters. The bridge is closed to vehicular traffic and is entirely pedestrian. Originally, the bridge had butcher and tanner shops. In 1595, an edict was issued to improve the prestige and cleanliness of the bridge, prohibiting butchers from having access to it. After that, only jewelers were allowed on the bridge. Today, numerous jewelry shops are situated on the old Florentine Bridge, hence its other well-known name, the Golden Bridge. Menteora consists of massive rocks with monasteries perched on the summits, serving as one of Greece's main religious sanctuaries. These inaccessible rocks, cut off from the world, became the refuge of hermits as early as the 11th century. The first monastic communities were established in the 14th century, and six of them still exist today. Previously, tourists could only ascend there with the help of monks and a complex system of ropes, baskets, carts, and brute force. Today, there is a well-paved road leading to the monasteries, showcasing unique frescoes, libraries housing rare medieval manuscripts, icons, and priceless relics. Mount Fanjingshan is an isolated stone pillar with its summit perpetually shrouded in clouds. It is located in southwest China and considered a sacred Buddhist site. One needs to ascend 8,000 steps to get to the top, which takes almost four hours. And then one needs to get back the same way. It is also known as the Red Cloud's Golden Peak, and it is astonishing in its beauty of its natural surroundings. There are two temples on the mountain summit. They are separated by a narrow ravine, which is spanned by a large stone bridge. One of the most unusual settlements on Earth, the cave town of Mata Mata, is located in the southern part of Tunisia, a small North African country. Mata Mata has around 700 man-made craters, making it the most famous cave town on the planet. Legend has it that people began these underground homes as a means of escaping from invaders and the scorching sun. They were created by hollowing out circular pits in the earth and lining them with stones, connecting the rooms with tunnels. The influences of modern civilization have not completely bypassed this lost ancient city, which now features satellite dishes, telephones, and refrigerators, blending in with primitive dwellings. Opal Capital This city is located in the depths of the Australian outback. It's a place where no one has taken a tourist trip for centuries and where there is nothing of interest except for vast stretches of scorched earth and rare snakes. However, 
There is one remarkable place there, but it's located underground. It's a minor city, Kuber Petty, which is part of an opal mining operation. The journey here takes eight hours from Adelaide to the south or Alice Springs to the north. Many of the town's residents live in houses resembling dugouts or caves. These dwellings help stabilize the climate, which can fluctuate from icy cold to scorching heat. The seasons in the Australian desert are no joke. One has to agree that these houses look very unconventional. However, they are not uncomfortable. They are quite modern and well-equipped. There's a lot of life in the town, so why wouldn't someone choose to live there? If the town's residents have found a way to deal with the inconveniences of such life, they are clearly very resourceful, skillful, and full of determination, since they continue living in one of the harshest places in all of Australia. Well, that's it for today, friends. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.